finally a full-sized, fully electric tourer from Volkswagen. This is the Volkswagen ID7 GTX, measuring 4.96 meters in total length with a wheelbase of 2.96 meters. So it's big, with big interior space, big exterior, and finally in a touring edition. Let's go through some details. So the GTX version comes with two motors, so all-wheel drive, one at the rear axle, permanent magnet motor delivering 286 horsepower and one at the front delivering 109 horsepower induction motor combined output 340 horsepower 250 kilowatts of total output top speed 180 kilometers per hour should be able to do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour just below six seconds maybe 5.7 I'm guessing here because there is no official figure put out from Volkswagen yet and the WLTP range, also not known. This car has the newly developed bigger battery pack with 13 modules instead of 12, with a total gross capacity of 91 kilowatt hours and a net capacity of 86. I'm guessing, but I think the WLTP range will be just above 600 kilometers, but let's see about that. It's not officially available yet. A well-known face, looks a lot like the other ID cars in the series. This has a bit of a different front bumper because it's the GTX version. As you see here, especially the lower part, kind of a mesh net here in plastic. Black piano finish, looks a bit more sporty, but still modern and sophisticated in some way. Illuminated logo and the classic light bar going through the whole front area of the car. What do you think? Does this one look better than the ID7 sedan version I just tried? The blue one? Let me know in the comments below. As a standard, it also comes with a specially tuned GTX suspension, a bit more sporty and a bit stiffer than the regular suspension you can get. On top of that, you can also equip it with Volkswagen's DCC setup, that's active dampers for a more dynamic and at the same time comfortable suspension and ride quality. But that's not included in the GTX package. The GTX version comes with 20 inch wheels. These total black ones though are not standard, so you need to extra equip it to get fully black rims, but the same size, 235s at the front, 255s at the back, so a staggered setup to support the extra amount of torque at the rear axle. The new battery pack is not only bigger, it also charges faster. So traditional opening with a CCS2 connector, of course, type two combined. When it comes to fast charging, DC charging, it has a capacity of 205 kilowatts as a top speed. Should be able to charge 10 to 80% in just under 30 minutes. Sounds reasonable if you ask me. Home charging, 11 kilowatts and three phase support. Now to the most exciting part about the GTX, or especially the ID7 Touring, that's the rear end of the car. And personally, I think the design is a lot better than the sedan version, goes more well hand in hand with the total shape of the car. Really nice looking rear end, especially this light bar going through the whole rear of the car, illuminated rear logo type in red, nice looking. Can also equip it with a tow hitch. Nice thing is that the tow capacity is actually upgraded since it's four wheel drive, so going from one ton to 1.2 tons in total tow capacity. So not only quicker and stronger, but also more tow capacity, so more practical in several aspects. Let's have a look at the boot. 605 liters of boot capacity. So really practical here with a partial shelf divider, conveniently placed, easy to remove and possible to stow away underneath here. And by the way, it's a multi-layer floor here. So there is several storage capabilities. First off, you have two floors and under the second floor, you have some extra storage with a couple of liters for storing cables and a lot of other stuff. So really nice practicality here from Volkswagen. This is really what the European markets are looking for. So foldable seats split into two parts, 40 and 60, with a separate ski latch in the middle. So not three parts, two parts. 
but still the capability of storing long things in between the two rear passengers. You fold the seats by pulling the levers here at each side and also the tow hitch is also extractable semi-manually from this lever here. There's also something called cargo mode, which means that you can add some additional or get some additional space by adjusting the rear backrests in two positions. So in the straight position, you actually gain a couple of liters in storage, a more square area for storing things, but of course not as good for the rear passengers and probably not recommended to sit that straight for longer rides. But still really good to get some extra storage, but still being able to carry the passengers at the rear seat. Let's take a short break and talk about my newly released members function here on YouTube. As a member, you get early access to content. You get access to all my test data that I have created during all the tests and reviews I have done. On top of that, you also get unique emojis <laughs> signed by me and priority replies on your comments. Most importantly, this is the best way of supporting my work and to help me staying independent. Thank you. So let's move on to the back seat and this is where the ID7 in general really shines because the amount of legroom is really amazingly good and as I usually say I'm tall so 193 centimeters tall or six foot four but still front seats are adjusted after my sitting position but I have a lot of amount a fist of knee room that's really nice possibility to squeeze my feet underneath the front seat without any problem at all and in addition to all that, the Touring version has really amazing headroom compared to the Sedan that had a okay headroom, but this one excels a fist of extra space above my head. That's really good. And then my head is not even underneath the glass. So if I set the seating position to a more straight seating position, I will have even more headroom. So that's really good. And otherwise, the same setup as in the ID7 sedan. Nice red stitching GTX details incorporated into the seat. So this is a mix between fabric and fake leather. Nice combination. Feels like it's two individual seats here at the back. You don't get a as comfortable mid-seat section here. But for smaller people or shorter for kids, etc., no problem whatsoever. And when it comes to other practical things, you have the mid armrest with two cup holders and that small little shot cup holder <laughs> at the middle. You can open this one. This is the ski latch for storing things in between the two seats. Still plenty amount of room, even if this is folded down. Fully individual headrests here at the back. All of them are adjustable height-wise and gives you a good support. They are cushioned and not too much leaning backwards. So you will be able to travel really comfortable here at the back seat. So to the mid console for the rear passengers, there is a third climate zone for the rear passengers where you can adjust the temperature, a very small screen. You can also turn on and turn off the seat heating in three different levels for the two outer positions here at the back. Underneath that screen, there's two USB-C ports for charging your devices and nice pockets on the rear backrests for storing a phone whilst charging, for instance. On top of that small screen that I just mentioned, you have two manual adjustable air ventilations for added comfort. Otherwise, a really nice back seat and the addition of the, of the panoramic glass roof, dimmable by the way, uh, it really gets nice, tidy and light up here at the back. You will never feel cramped in this back seats. So a great car for long travels, both in the front and here at the rear. This is really a practical car. If you want to know more about the ID7 in general, I recently made a full review of the ID7 Sedan Pro Edition. That's the long range rear wheel drive car and also tested some range acceleration, noise, etc. So more details here above. So well in the front, it looks almost exactly the same as the regular version of the ID7. Doesn't matter if it's a Touring or the Sedan version, the layout, the equipment is the same. But one of the biggest differences when it comes to the interior is the seats as such. So this is the GTX designed seats with a 
perforated GTX logo high up on the rear backrest. So the seat is based on mixed material, so kind of a Alcantara on the side bolsters. On the outsides there is kind of fake leatherette and the central seating position is covered in fabrics. Feels like a microfabric, not that super sporty. I'm not sure that I really feel a difference between the regular seats and these ones. You have some nice side bolsters, but they are not active, they are passive. Same thing goes for the side bolsterings here at your at your back so you get a decent amount of support but they are not that tight and not that sporty as you could guess when you go for a gtx version otherwise steering wheel the exact same layout the only difference is the red stitching here on the inside and also the gtx logo with the red accents around that one so a bit more sporty looking steering wheel than the standard wheel you get Otherwise, the same screen layout, the big and nice looking screen here at the center and the five inch instrument cluster from now on doesn't sit on the steering column, but inside the instrument cluster. Built in ambient lighting as in the normal ID7, 30 different colors adjustable and also turns on and off automatically depending on the light outside or the time of the day. So all in all, this is really a big leap forward for the ID cars. I mean, I have tried out the ID4, the ID5, the ID3, I have one myself, and the interior in the ID7 as such are on a totally different level. Looks so much more classy, looks, feels so much more premium than the other ID cars currently. So this is really in the right direction from Volkswagen. I'm really happy to see that they have listened to the customers and created a car that actually meets the market in a better way. This now really feels like the upper mid segment when it comes to the interior quality and materials. And here at the mid console, also a sturdy built mid console floating with some storage here underneath. Storage pockets here, two zones. We have a cup holder, adaptable, two cup holders, two USB-C ports, and uh, a built-in Qi charger at the same position. But this one though, doesn't seem to work with my Pixel Pro 8. I don't know, the coil seems to sit on the wrong position. If you want to know more about that, watch my other video where I'm showing that in a more detailed manner. And here, a very deep pocket for storing things and a small built-in tray so we can remove or set in two different positions. Decent storage space here and also a classical glove box with some decent storage side pockets on the door. So all in all, practicality also goes for the storage here in the front row. So this was a sneak peek of the ID7 GTX Touring. More will come, I will try to lend the car for a longer period when it's available here in Sweden on the Swedish market that's not yet so hopefully as soon as possible but what's more suitable than ending this video inside the booth of the ID7 GTX Touring I mean this is the main point the main attraction of this car so let me know what you think about this car in the comments below is this the right car for the market is this what the market actually needs currently will this be the best selling ID car for the European market from now and onwards I think it possibly can I mean touring all the practical aspects a big and comfortable silent car so I think it has the potential to really hit good on the European market especially here in the Nordics where everyone wants a tow hitch a big boot capacity a dog lives in a house etc so very very convenient for a lot of people here in the Scandinavian countries. So I think that's all for today. This was a really short video, a short introduction to this car. Hopefully I will be able to, to lend it very soon to test drive it for real in a later stage. Be right back about that. To support my work, please subscribe, like and engage. Three very important aspects. And on top of that, always stay electric. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.